Hey guys, it's a new month, but you know, we gotta talk about what we read last month. So I'm here to talk about my February wrap up. February didn't go exactly as I planned, even though I did read um, most of the books on my TBR. But I was a little disappointed in one of the books I didn't get, I didn't finish at all. So I am uh, gonna continue on. Um, but the books that I read this month had me mixed feeling. Um, it wasn't as excited as last month to me. So there are some gems in my, um, the books that I read. But then there are some really like, no <laughs> situation. So I'm going to talk about them. And the ones that I have a full review of, I would link it in the description so you can go check it out. So I won't talk much about those. But here we go. So the first book that I was happy about is The Perfect Ruin. And this one was for the Blackathon um, under the psychological thriller. I like this. At first I wasn't sure where it's going, but I like this because it was clever. It was clever. Um, there's some secrets in there. There is some reveal. There's some moments where you're rooting for the bad guy and you, you're you cheering the bad guy on and then you, you're thinking that there might be a part two to this. Um, so that, that's a possibility that the author definitely can continue on with this. Um, I like it. Um, there are some moments where you knew somewhat something wasn't right from the get-go. Um, but the author did a good job of keeping you engaged, keeping you want to know what's happening next, that rise to riches. You know, when, when you have this ultimate revenge story and the person is caught up now with the with, with seeing what wealth can do, with seeing what having someone can do and what they want. I absolutely enjoyed this one. It was a sweet surprise and I was happy about it. Then I wanted to do a uh, movie, books to movie adaptation and this is where Sounder came in. Now this is a book that I did not read, well, yes I did. I think I read it as a child, I'll be honest with you, at the time when I'm reading it I wasn't sure. But I definitely remember this as a, a child. Um, but I didn't remember detail and I think it went over my head. So as an adult reading this, I appreciate the book so much more and I thought this was such an amazing book. It's short, literally you can read this in one little sitting and, and you know, enjoy it. Now why I did read this, because I wanted to watch the movie because of Cicely Tyson. You guys know that was one of my favorite books from last year. And I wanted to see her in her glory. This is the book she got an Oscar nomination for. Um, this is the role that she also um, was her first real acting role where she had to dig deep and, and portray this. And if you saw the, the video that I did for this, I hope you guys watch it. You see her facial reaction. You see how she was just gifted and didn't even realize how gifted she was. And so I enjoyed this. I do feel that they did an entirely different movie to me than the book. I wish they had stick more to the book because this book was amazing and it's in the, the point of view of a child. And I think maybe because of when, the period of time when the movie came out, um, they couldn't really maybe thought an, a child actor could play off that. But I would love to see this get redone in and, and stick closer to the book. So yeah. Then the next book I read, enjoy this one. This one is about a, a, a mother who passed away and she left a video to her children telling her life story, revealing secrets and things that they did not know about their mother. And at first when I was reading this, I was thinking, oh Lord, it reminds me of another book. But as the story goes, you realize there's so much more. I love the history part of the story where it talks about the Caribbean and the, you know, what was happening in the Caribbean at that time. Also the cultural thing, she is part Chinese and um, the cultural things that was going on with, even with that in Jamaica, which remind me of a book and I did a review, I told you what book, um, one, some book you should read and it's in the author's notes. I was very happy that it was in there because it did give me that vibes of where I'm like, that, you know, remind me of this and it did that. Now the, the title 
black cake and you get it you get the the whole idea of cultural influence the whole idea of what you take with you what you keep even as certain things of your life changes and um i like that now the the mother has two kids in this and their secrets that reveal and how they have to live with that how they have to move forward and all the other things that um it is happening in the story that really draw you in um i thought this was done because this is not necessarily like an original story you know she had to bring it in terms of making it her own and this is what she did in this i think she, she took a um a story that has predictable predictable moments in it but created in a unique way where she writes it and you felt like she was making it her own, that kind of deal. Um, so that's what I feel with this. Um, if you read it, let me know how you feel and if you enjoy this one. Then, my favorite book of the month, no if and buts about it, and that is Tell Me How Long the Train's Been Gone by James Bowen. I did a video of this as well and definitely go check out the video review I did of this. This was such a juicy writing style the way this man wrote this book it just sucks you in you just know this was a great writer period and i like how simple the storyline is but how he did it in a, such a way where it makes you think of so many things and in this you have this man who's had a heart attack and he's reflecting on his life and you're going through his childhood, you're going through his adult, how he got his career in um, Broadway and, and acting. And then you, you, you are in his, the, this, this other stage of his life, that, that whole reflection, that whole full circle of him um, coming to grip with all the things that happened and, 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 um, and not also accepting certain things. It is so much in that he packed in this book that you can really reflect on different parts of the story. You can have an entire discussion about something totally different about this book because there's certain things you can take away from this book that is going to depend on the reader. It's going to depend on what really grab you in this because there's so much you can take away from this. And I love books that have all these theme and all these different things because in this there's family. In this, in sexuality, in this, is race. Um, there's, there's so many elements to this man that you will find him very interesting in this, and it is, it is really packed with so many quotable moments as well in this story. Love this. I am such a diehard Jane Baldwin fan, and every time he gives me a book that I can really like grab onto and really absorb his words, I am like, yes, I love this this is like top nap my favorite book so far this year and i am ready for more <laughs> of him the next book there was a drama i ordered the book and they sent me a used book and it's a used book of the month y'all i don't do book of the month i don't have a subscription for them it's just i just don't so i was very upset about it but then when i complained it turned out it i basically got it for nothing <laughs> because it was a mistake legitimate mistake on their hand and what I did hate is the fact it is it's damaged the, the this right here got taped up it's bangs all over so I've read it but this is probably gonna go in the books that box I have where books I'm giving away because I, and I'm kind of happy it turned out that I didn't have to pay much for this because it was okay book this this was not a book I, so I was so happy because when I'm reading it, I'm like, it is a cute story. I don't even know if this is adult really because it felt more like younger audience, um, family romance kind of deal. This is about a girl who mother had an affair and she is a product of an affair. Father passes away and one of his um, dying wish was that his children were all get together and get to know her. So he has four kids with his wife and this is the outside child. And while she, before she goes, she meets a guy who is also connected to that family in Nigeria. And so when she goes, they realize he's there. There's a little bit of romance and it's also drama of 
her dealing with the fact that she grew up without a father, she grew up not getting the same treatment that they got. They, he's like this wonderful father that she, she doesn't know and she's not going to look at him as this wonderful father because he never claimed her publicly. So that's what you get with this. But there's just some of it where it's like it's cute and there's some of it where I'm like, I don't know how memorable this would be. Like you asked me about this book by the end of the year, I might just be like womp womp. Um, I didn't think it was okay. It was okay. This is like what I call a three star read where it's not bad, but it's not like great. Like, you know, that kind of deal. So, um, but this is the only romance I got through and I'm just kind of happy I got some romance in because this is February and I did not get any other romance in, which is pretty sad. So yeah, so this was an okay book. Not terrible, it's just okay. All right. The worst book I've ever read from this author and in a long time, Coastal Whitehead, Harlem Shuffle. This was such a disappointment. I wanted to DNF this book so bad. I literally started to read the book. I put it down. And then the last week, I decided to pick it up and just finish it. And I literally was forcing myself to finish it, which you should never do. If you are reading for leisure, reading for fun, you shouldn't have to force yourself to get through a book. And that's what I was doing with this because it was boring. It was all over the place. And I hate stupid character. And you guys know this. I hate books where characters are blatantly allowing themselves to go through some unnecessary mess. Here goes a man on the furniture shop and his cousin keep giving him stolen goods or getting involved with robbery. And he's like holding on to crap for the bed. Yo, I just the time I was like, I, I can't take you seriously. Man, I can't take you seriously. There's times where he's talked about what's happening in Harlem with all the, the, the buildings that are being robbed from the, the, the black folks there. And there were um, banking issues as far as that. So he was talking about real serious things that were happening at the time. But how the story was delivered and all that was boring. It was... I, I, I had to scratch my head to, to try to figure out... I don't know this author. I've read quite a few books, but I don't know this author. <laughs> like, and then I realized that's why I haven't heard any review of this because so many people said they DNF'd it and I understood why they DNF'd it because if I wasn't the kind of person I am where I'm just like pushing through a book, I would have DNF'd it as well because, and even though I decided to force myself to go through the end, nothing about it recovered. It started out blah, where I'm like, you know, couple of pages in I'm like this had potential of being really really good because the storyline how it's built up and then somehow it just lost it where I'm just like what are you talking about what's the point where are we getting at it, yeah I'm sorry guys I don't know anybody that actually liked this book um or gave it a decent rating I think the most rating I've seen is three I can't even give it three I'm just being honest this is like a two star just because just because <laughs> so yeah this is a this is a no this is my most disappointing book so far this year yeah then I read a memoir that surprised the heck out of me and that is and I just I I'm gonna be honest I finished this on the first I'm still considering February because it was like 20 pages on the first anyway this is I take my coffee black now Tyler Mer I don't know nothing about this man never heard of him this book was sent to me and it turned out there was a popular video that came out and um, I forgot the name of the title. Dear, um, Dear Police. Oh no, Don't Call the Police. So something like that. Um, and he was the guy that did that video and he was all over social media in the, in the 2020 when all of the protests and everything was happening. His videos resurfaced that he did I think back in two, 2016. Something like that. Yeah. Um, that's where he gets is well known from. Now, what I liked about this, um, he's Christian, but he's not the conventional Christian. He is that Christian that is very flawed, but he connects with young Christians because of how he is um, the flawed, the, the whole idea of him being very open about certain things, his weakness for women. Um, his uh, musical past, his, his acting things, and how realistic he is with 
young people who do wrong. And in this, that made me look at him in a different light of talking about this because oftentimes when it comes to Christianity thoughts, there's that whole that you have to be perfect. There's that whole where your flaws are, even though people might say you can have flaws, they really don't mean it because if your flaws are certain things, you get judged in a harsher way as if like you have to live up to being this perfect being. And how honest he is in this on certain things, the man cuss. <laughs> and, you know, and so there's this moment in where he felt so human. He felt like that kind of person that you can actually sit down and have a conversation with. And you get why younger um, Christians flock to him in terms of listening to him speak because of how open he is about life and being, um, you you know, and sin and, and things that happen that sometimes it takes a lot of years for you to learn not to make those mistakes and uh, especially those mistakes that you keep repeating. Um, he talks about race in a way that you you understood him, how royal and um, at times there was a, the emotional parts where he talks about it being a black man and experiencing so many things and having that circle he have a circle of white friends he have a circle of um different uh background and he didn't grow up in the traditional sense of feeling racial um issue until he got a little bit older um he grew up in vegas where he was amongst different community of different um, cultural groups and so he never experienced what you would think a, a black man would have experienced in america and I like how open he is about that, or open about his his family background, his mom being the first in so many ways of her with her career, and how his father, um, a military man, and how he's able to get certain parts of the military that at the time would have forced him into something else. Um, in it is his whole idea how he Christianity got him and how. One thing that also that I really appreciate was how this is a man who got to the root of his issue with women. And you saw how one incident of something that happened to him younger created this mistrust and often, oftentimes mistreatment of women because of that one incident that happened to him when he was younger that he didn't quite get over and you see that a lot of time with men and you wonder why did they become this this person why do they feel the need to mistreat women and this thing and you never know why but in this you get to see a man and you see oh yeah that really took him out <laughs> and he never really could recover until he was much older when something happened where he saw a mirror image of what happened to him with someone else and it was just like that aha moment i can really talk about this a lot and i love memoirs like this because it was such a juicy but such a like your homeboy talking to you or your homegirl talking to you and they telling you bits and pieces of things you didn't know and you're just like oh really and you can just see it unfold that's how this came up now i'm gonna tell you something about him He's corny sometimes. He he tried to be funny, but it was corny. But it was that corny that you still end up laughing. <laughs> That's it. So anyway, I'm gonna start talking about this because as you can see, I can really talk about this. But I highly recommend this memoir. If you're looking for a memoir that's gonna entertain you, give you you know a, a lot of different range of a someone and a t different take on a Christian, a man who is in his faith very deeply rooted in his faith um and a take on it because like i said sometimes those kind of book you don't get that feel and you you, you kind of lose a little bit of it so but i enjoyed this and this was the last book so yeah guys that's it <laughs> i am going to end this video here and uh hopefully the next video should be uh back to vlogging i have not vlogged in about two weeks but the vlogs will be back and I'll see you. Let me know what's your favorite book you've read in February. And uh, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye.